So we've come to an exciting point in our exploration of the Django official tutorial. We're now going to actually write views that do something useful. So at the moment our views are not particularly useful. We're going to look at this index page here. It just returns hello world, you're at the polls index. Not the most useful page, not something you would be too excited about visiting. But now let's change that up and we're going to define something actually useful inside this view function and return a useful response to the client or the user that actually wants to visit this page. So let's go to the Django documentation and have a look at this. Now every view is responsible for doing one of two things. You can return an HTTP response object, that's what we're doing at the moment. Or you can raise some kind of exception such as an HTTP 404 exception. But everything that happens in between that is up to you. You can do anything you want in a Django view, you can call AI models, you can process PDF files, you can do anything you want. And importantly you can look up objects and read records from a database. And what you can also do is use Django's templates to return HTML content that has CSS and JavaScript built in. And that allows you to actually build interesting and interactive pages instead of this kind of thing that we see at the moment. So we're going to explore that in this video. Now we're going to look at the polls index page which is slash polls. At the moment this just has this text content. But what we actually want to see here is a list of the most recent polls that have been added to the application. So let's go to the docs and we'll see how to achieve that. So we're going to use Django's database API, otherwise known as the Django ORM. And we're going to amend our index view here to add the code from this tutorial. Now I'm going to write this code from scratch instead of copying it, just so that we can see what is happening if you're new to this. And we're going to import this model at the top. So let's go to views.py and at the top here from the models.py file, we import the question model. And remember, that is this model that we defined earlier in the series. And that contains a question text and also a publication date for the question. So let's now go to views.py and we're going to change up the index view. So at the moment we're printing request.user, we don't need that anymore. And we're going to remove this comment as well. Now we're going to define a variable here called latest question list. And what we can do with this is we can fetch objects from the database using this question model that we have imported. And we saw the objects interface for actually querying the database earlier in this series. So we're going to use question.objects and we're going to use a function or a method rather on this objects manager. Now before I finish this statement, let's add a comment above. And let's say we want to get the five most recently added questions, and I'll fix the spelling of that in a second, from the database. So if I can fix this spelling, we want to get the five questions that were most recently added to the database. Now if we go to models.py, the question model has this pub date or publication date, and that is a date time field. And what we can do is we can order the questions in the database by this publication date. That's what we're going to do now. So in order to get the question rows back in a specific order, we can use the order by function on the model manager. So order by is going to take one argument or at least one argument and that's going to be a field that we want to order by and that is going to be the pub date. Now by default in SQL this gives us back the records in ascending order. So the most recently added one is going to be at the bottom. In order to reverse that and get the question that was most recently added at the top, we can just add this syntax here. We add a minus to pub date and that changes the ascending statement in SQL to descending and it's going to give us back the questions that have most recently been added at the top of the list. Now in order to get five of these, only five, what we can do is we can index into the query set and we can get the top five as so. So this just uses Python's array slicing notation. What this gives us back is a Django query set and that supports this notation here if you want to get back only a certain number of objects. So the effect of this statement here is to get the five most recently added questions in the database and return them and store them in this variable called latest question list. Now once we have the latest questions we can format some kind of output to be returned to the client. Now we're going to see a better way to do this in the upcoming videos but for now what we're going to do is we're going to take the output here or rather we're going to take each question that we have here and we're going to join these with a comma. So we can use the comma.join statement. So that is a method on strings in Python, string.join. And then we can create a list comprehension here. And we're going to take each question and we're going to get back the question text for that question for Q in latest question list. And then finally we can remove the hard-coded string here and return that output to the user. 
So let's just quickly go over this. We get the five most recently added questions and then for each one of these we extract the question text and we join these into a string with a comma separator and return that as the output. Now let's go to the polls application and refresh this and you can see we have these two polls or these two questions that have been returned. So the text for the first question is Django better than React and then the second what is the capital of France. And these have been separated with this comma here. So at the moment in the database, we only have two questions. So even though we're indexing in here to get the top five most recently added, because we only have two, we get back a latest question list that only contains the two questions that we have. But if we did have a million questions in this database, this would only return the five most recently added and return those outputs here for the question text to be displayed on the page. Now let's go to the documentation again. There is a problem here, as you can see. The page's design is hard coded into the view. Now if you want to change the way that this page looks, what you're going to have to do is edit the Python code. A much better and much more maintainable way to do this is to use Django's template system to separate the design from Python by creating an HTML template that the view can then use. So what we're going to do is create a directory called templates in the polls directory. Let's go to VS Code and bring back the sidebar here. And inside the polls directory, we can create a templates subdirectory. And once we have that, if we go down here, when you have a templates directory, we can create anything in that. We can create HTML files or we can create a subdirectory. And this is a best practice in Django. We namespace our templates by the application name. So inside templates here, we can create another directory called polls. And then we're going to create some HTML files inside the polls directory. So let's go back here. This one's called h, uh, sorry, index.html. Let's create that inside the polls directory. And at the moment, this is now an empty HTML file. But what we can do is define HTML content and inside the Django view, we can return that HTML content rendered as a response and then send that back to the user. That is much better than what we're doing just now. Now, if we go to the documentation, notice here that the project template setting describes how Django will load and render templates. And the default settings file configures a Django templates backend whose app directories option is set to true. And what that means is that Django is going to look for a templates subdirectory in each of the installed apps. So for example, we have an installed app here called Polls. That was the one we created. And Django is then going to be able to find this templates subdirectory. And the reason for that, if we go to settings.py, let's scroll down here to the templates setting. This is one of the settings that comes out of the box. And unless you change this to something else, it's going to use Django templates and it's going to have app directories set to true, which means it can then find that templates subdirectory in each installed app. So that's a bit of background on the template setting. Let's close this. Now I want to look at this section here on template namespacing. Now we might be able to get away with putting all of our templates directly inside polls slash templates instead of creating that additional polls subdirectory. Well, that is a bad idea because Django is going to choose the first template name it finds whose name matches. So what we've done here is we've created index.html. That is a very generic HTML name and it could be used in any number of applications, not just polls. And Django is going to use the first one it finds, but by namespacing this under templates using the name of the application, that is going to prevent that problem because now Django is going to look specifically for slash polls slash index.html and we'll see how to reference this file in a second. So that is the benefit of template namespacing. Other applications that you use, including third-party applications, might have their own HTML templates, and you don't want a conflict to arise. And that is why it's a good idea to namespace the templates that you have in a given Django application that you're writing. Now at the moment, we can scroll down and we're gonna copy the code here, and we're gonna paste that into index.html. So let's go to our new HTML file, and we're gonna paste this in. So this is our introduction to the Django template language. And you can see we can do things such as check if a given variable is defined using an if statement in the template. And we can also loop over values using a template for tag. So let's dive into this a little bit just now. So if latest question list, in other words, did the view find some latest questions here? And remember, we have two in the database, but it is possible that when you first create the application, there might not be any objects in the database, in which case latest question list would evaluate to false. But if any questions do exist that are returned, that will evaluate to true. And inside this block, this is what is created when that is true. In the else statement that you can see here, it says no polls are available. So if we don't have any questions, it will go to the else block. 
So that's how you can do conditional logic inside a Django template. If we do have questions, we create an HTML unordered list, and then we can iterate over each question in the latest question list using this template for loop. And for each question, we are rendering an LI tag. And inside the LI tag, we have an link here, an anchor tag. And that is pointing to this URL here, this href of slash polls slash question dot ID. So for the question that we are iterating over, that is a model instance and that has the dot ID property. We can use that to get the ID for the detail URL. So this is a link to the detail page. And inside the link text, we are just rendering the actual question text as we're about to see on the page. So let's now save this. Now, one thing we need to do is we need to tell the view function to return this HTML template instead of just returning this raw text output. So let's see an example of how to do that just now. We're gonna go back to the documentation and scroll down, and we're going to update the index view, and we're gonna use this loader from the Django.template package. Let's bring that in at the top there from Django.template import loader. Once we have that, we can go back here and let's see what's changed. So we've created a template variable here by calling loader.getTemplate and we pass in the link to our template, which is polls slash index.html. Let's copy that and go back to the view function. And I'm gonna comment this line of code out. We're no longer going to use that output. We're gonna create the template. And in fact, let me just remove this line of code here so we can see things more clearly. So what we're doing here is we're calling loader.getTemplate. And this is a method that's gonna load and return a template with the given name, in this case, the polls slash index.html template. Once we have the template, what we can do is we can actually create what's called a context dictionary that contains any values we want to pass in from the view to the template for rendering. Now, if we go to index.html, this particular HTML template is expecting a context variable called latest question list. So what we can do inside our view function is we can create a key here in the, in the context dictionary called latest question list. And we can map that to the value that we pulled out from the database on line nine and that was the ORM query to get the five most recently added questions. So we're adding that context here. And the final thing we need to do is change the HTTP response that we're, that we're returning. So let's remove that output that we removed. And if we go back to the documentation, what we're gonna do now is call template.render. So we got back a reference to the index template and we're now gonna call the .render method. And we pass the context into that alongside the Django request object. So let's go back here and see this in action. We're calling template.render, and that takes the context dictionary containing these dynamic values we want to use in the template, and also the request object. And remember, the request object is passed into every Django view function, and it's there and available, and in this case, it's required for template.render. So now that we've made these changes, let's go back to the page here, and let's refresh this page. And you can see that this has changed. We now have an unordered list here containing the question text for each of the questions that we have in the database. And for each one of these, we have a link to the detail page. Now, if I click, is Django better than React? We get taken to the detail page with the ID of one in the URL. And if we go back here and click, what is the capital of France? That has the ID of two in the database. So we're taken to the page with that ID. So this is really nice. What we now have is the ability to return HTML. We have extracted the logic for actually defining the user interface. And that is much better than doing that logic in Python because we can now very easily amend the structure of the page. And we can also add things like CSS and JavaScript to make the page look better and also make it look more interactive. And we'll see some examples of that later on. Now I want to just summarize what's going on here. So let's go back to views.py. We are pulling out five of the most recently added questions from the database. And then we are getting a reference to the template that we just created, and that was index.html. And we created that in the polls directory here under the templates, as you can see. And if we look at the content defined inside that HTML file, it's expecting the latest question list to be available. So it checks that using a template if statement. And this is an example of conditional logic inside a Django template. And then if we do have questions, we create an unordered list and we iterate over each one of them. And because we got this latest question list using a Django database ORM query, this means that each question that we iterate over is gonna be the question model instance that represents that question. And that means we have access to question fields such as question date, publication date, and also the implicit ID primary key field that's added by Django. So because we have that available for each question, we can then reference the question text. And that question text is what we see inside the text of these anchor tags. 
And if we look at the href, the link here, we can see we are embedding the question ID into the link and that takes us to the detail page for the given question. So these are examples of template tags in Django. We have if and for, and we also have examples here of template variables. These are dynamic values that are interpolated and expanded. And we can refer to properties on model objects as one example, as you can see here. So if you want to reference a variable in the context, you just surround it with the two curly braces, and then you can refer to any fields on that, for example, or any methods. Now we're gonna take this further very soon, but if we go back to views.py, the final thing we need to do in order to actually render this template is we take the template that we got and we call the dot render method. We pass any context into that and context is a dictionary containing keys, any number of keys. It doesn't have to be just one. You can have any number of keys here and each key maps to a value that you can then use inside the template. Now we're going to see a handy shortcut for this workflow in the next video because it turns out that you can actually take the three lines of code that you have here and you can condense that into a single line using this render shortcut method that we have at the top. We're gonna to see that in the next video. That's gonna be all for this one. Thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed this content, check out our coffee page that we've got a link to just below the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. If you're enjoying the content, consider joining the channel as a member. Thanks very much to everyone who has joined so far. And we're looking forward to seeing you in the next video.